Hi, Alan, this is Judy. Can we test your um, audio, please? Hi, can you hear me? I can hear you now, perfect. Okay, Thank Great. you. thank you. Testing one. Oh, yeah. So Debbie, you know Alan Gregory's not going to join, right? Debbie? Good morning, Alan. Can you hear us? Debbie, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. You know that Alan Gregory is not going to join, right? Yes. Okay. That's the only person I've heard from.
So I figured it'd be Oh, yeah, which like two hours. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, she's back with Denise. And I'm not going all the way back there. I'll never make it. So we'll just, we'll carry on and she will join us. Good morning, everybody. Sorry, we're rounding up the players. <laughs> um, I'm going to get us started. It's 835, calling us to order and asking for any public comment. Hearing none, seeing no one else on the Zoom. Um, we're going to go to approval of the June 19th, 2023 minutes. Any comments or questions? Move approval as presented. Second. Alan? Sorry. Um, yeah, I would just uh, like to update. Just There's a statement there regarding the facade improvement thing where it said Mr. Delwitz said he was in favor of not making the grant retroactive for work completed and that no more than 25,000 should be allocated in one year. Actually, I think I was trying to say I didn't think more than 25,000 should be allocated, period, whether it's one year or eight years. So it's just like a little clarification on that. Jim, you, you got that down? Okay. Uh, okay to yeah, with move that minutes change, as move and, and John, you're okay Second. with that I'm too? With that. Yeah. All those in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. How about uh, financial reports for April, May, and June? Anne. Right. And we have April and May. We don't have June yet. So I'll just go through very quickly May. We have a fund balance of 928109 uh, We are continuing, and I'll go to the third page. For year to date, we've collected out of the 115000 in property tax that we budgeted, we've collected 87549 And we have um, the main activity in the expenditures was the payments to Paragon to finish the demolition early in the year. But uh, that's the May financials. I'd be happy to answer questions. We should have June for the next meeting. Okay. Any questions about the financial reports? Motion to accept the financial reports? So move. And a second? A second. Uh, second by Marcy, Jim. Um, any other comments or questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Um, moving to old business, the Marcy Morrison Bridge Art and Spirit of Manitou <laughs> status. And Barley, I guess you're giving this because Becca is no longer with us soon. She's technically done now. She is. Um, done, uh, finished at the end of this month um, and currently on vacation. <clears throat> um, so the spirit of Manitou is moving forward very, very well. The, um, the Tom Benedict piece is scheduled to be installed at the Holiday Inn Express on the Day of Friendship that morning. The Columbine is going to be late, probably August 13th, I think. She's having trouble with the transport, not trouble, but it's just going to take longer than she expected. And because it has to be put in pieces. <clears throat> the, um, uh, what's the other one? The Marcy Morrison Bridge, the panels are installed and completed and um, Crane paid a little additional funds to um, repair the damage that was done. We had a, oh, I thought I did tell Jim. We had a we did have a um, we had a fellow who was driving by on a bicycle constantly all day long, hassling Javier as he was working. And at one point, he flipped a panel, and Javier was able to protect the panel, but a quarter a corner of it was broken. So he had to repair that piece. Um, and there was a police report filed, but so far nothing. He did get a picture of him biking away. Um, Denise is aware of it. 
um, but <clears throat> Javier took it in style, I must say. He said, I'm from California. I was a bouncer. <laughs> was like, he's like, he does not, he does not scare me. <laughs> I was like, okay. So that, um, so the, he's working on some of the repairs, doing some of the finishing touches this week. He will be here all the way through the day of friendship so that everybody can meet him. There's a little bit of um, finishing work that he wants done where at the top of the panel meets the bridge and there's he has beads that he wants installed there, but he can't get them here in time for the day of friendship. So he's gonna train Audrey Gray and she's going to install them for him so that he can still leave after day of friendship. And then she'll be able to do those finishing touches. Um, so the bridge is on time, the Columbine in August, the Tom Benedict piece. What was the other part of my report? Oh, the crane has moved to the chamber offices. We've released our lease with Rich Baker. That's where our office was so that we can um, save another $20,000 a year to put towards our mission of getting art on the avenue. And I think that's pretty much it, I think. There's other things going on downtown, but this is what's particular to the URA. Does anybody have any questions? <clears throat> Can it be replaced? I, I, yes. I have a comment and I know, I, maybe I'm the only crazy person that sees this, but um, we have this huge weed coming out of the bridge, but when you're going over the bridge, there's a huge weed coming out of the drainage. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. If, I, I don't know how you can miss it because I mean it's no. unusual. It I mean, it's it's yes, more than it, one. Pardon me. And there's more than one. Well, the, weed. The, the one I'm talking about yeah. is about this high now. It started last year. I was watching it progress, <laughs> and hoping that someone else would see it, <laughs> but no one. But my concern is seriously that that weed has now grown so high that its roots may be forming mm -hmm. underneath in our pipeline mm -hmm. or in our, whatever we've got on, in, underneath the cement, underneath our street. And it, it could cause some damage at some point in time. You don't want, it. I mean, you know how you feel about it in your house. If, I mean, if you've mm -hmm. got things under, I, I know I've had, you know, they've dug up from my sewer, interesting, too. interesting <laughs> things that came out of the ground. So I'm, I'm just saying it would be a good idea if we could get that torn down. And well, I, I would add to that and say that the all of the landscaping that we've installed associated with the bridge project mm -hmm. need the weeding needs to occur and it certainly needs to be cleaned up before the day of friendship. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it it looks ragged now. It'll look worse then. I, I didn't want to go further than that though, Jeff, because I. <laughs> I, I I know how tight everything is to get done, and but I've watched that weed growing, and it's and with all the rain, it, it's magnificent now. It really is. It's about three feet high. And, well, I periodically go by and do a C click fix um, on landscaping, uh, both at the entry uh, along the avenue and near the bridge, and I'll I'll do it again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Near the bridge underneath, yes. I mean, there was a there was a significant weed in front of the uh, Jay Dynasty a month or so ago, and I called that in, and it was removed within a couple of days. So there is some response. Good. Thank you for doing that, John. And Jim, you the next time you're with um, Denise and company, you might want to mention the ongoing. Issues. I mean, we're all having the issues because we've got such moisture this year, right? Like, my weeds are impressive too. Yeah. Well, I'm not, <laughs> and I'm not keeping yeah, up. And that's and that's the point. Yeah. But this weed has been growing. This yeah. weed is. Yeah. This one has, has some has, history already. It, it does. <laughs> it's. But I thought uh, Denise told me that she would. She wanted to say a few words to this group, so she may be in. Okay. She's back from her cog adventure. Thank you, Barb. I just had a quick question on Farley's report. Uh, are there plans to replace Becca? Yes. Yes. Um, right now, the crane board is 
um, the executive committee's meeting every Thursday, and um, we will be doing our strategic planning session in mid-August. And at that point, um, that strategic planning session will inform what, um, what we need in an administrator. Um, we might be downgrading the position from director to an admin um, that would be working closely with the chamber. That's why we've negotiated with the chamber to be in the chamber offices. And, um, and then we will, I'm guessing by September, we'll probably start a search based on what comes out of the August strategic planning session. Um, I'm one of the participants taking care of our planters in our section. And I think we became disassociated with Crane. And I don't know if it was because of Becca's departure or just because that we wanna be organized differently within the city. But I guess I'm a little fuzzy on what our relationship is on the continued, any support or maintenance of our planters. Right, right. You know, we we went ahead and did fund the um, re that work for right. this year. And the request did come from Becca and Crane. So I would say in the reorganization of that effort, if you'll just make the request, whomever is in charge of the pollinator project going forward, if they'll just make a request to the URA so that we can consider it before you need supplies and all of that stuff, that's what happened this year. And I guess where I'm a little confused, we work with Melody. Yes, and Melody Doherty. And where is Melody housed in the city government? She's not. Oh. <laughs> it's an all volunteer okay. effort. That's where I'm confused, yes. where we align with the city for, in some respect, the future of our planters as well, not just if it's totally volunteer or what that future is going to look like. So it continues to be maintained. And certainly we come back to the URA for funding for supplies and materials, but and we're all happy to volunteer, but that's, you know, we'll hit the wall someday in particular. So Nancy. Maybe. No, uh, my sense is, is that the pollinator group is a is a private group of citizens or people around, not not even from Manitou necessarily, um, and there is no formal relationship with the city, so it's informal. But it sounds like the URA. If you go, it, is Melody in charge of the? Is our contact point? Okay. It's a good question, though. I'm glad you asked. Because I think this just kind of floats out there and doesn't really have a home. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I think it should have some, some formal alignment, even loosely, that there's accountability for landscaping in the city, of which this is a volunteer project, but it needs some responsibility overseeing that in some manner. Yeah. As I say, for its future more than anything as volunteers fade away or change, so. Uh, I was just gonna say that um, the pollinator, uh, pollinators will be discussed in the strategic planning. And that was not a program that was ever formally um, introduced or, or um, embraced by the crane board. It was Becca. So you're right, it is floating now. Yeah. So. But the whole issue of, of maintenance needs to be addressed, and hopefully that'll be addressed through the DDA evaluation project. I'm not sure where that is at this point in time, but uh, we've identified this as an issue long term because we're going to go away and our funding is going to go away at some point in time. And there is a need for maintenance, including snow removal, the pollinator uh, planter boxes, uh, um, I assume that the facilities within parks should be taken care of by parks, but that may not be clear. Yeah. And there's a lot of streetscape just along the avenue that yeah. just gets cared for, right, by a variety of sources and funds. So looking at that as a whole package, right, how are we handling that makes a whole lot of sense. Yes, Barb. 
Nancy, there's a bit of a security problem kind of speaking to Farley's comment about Javier. I mean, in my instances of watering my two planters that I adopted near the inter main intersection, I've been harassed by individuals while I'm out there with my heavy gallon or 10 gallon bucket. And uh, I just think some of that area needs patrolled a little more effectively. Yeah, and I would definitely recommend at whatever point you feel uncomfortable that you um, contact the police at make a report because we need to start, we need to track that kind of stuff. If I could follow up on that, um, there's definitely uh, more issues right now. My neighbor who is the local east side dealer <laughs> is moved back onto the property. And I think that that's when we start to see an influx of people harassing people. And I have reported it to the police many times and I've asked them to do extra parole patrols and to patrol my parking lot, which is problematic because we close early. So there's no eyes on it really after 10 o'clock. So um, it, it is a zone and, um, and it is a problem and it's concerning. Well, that didn't go the direction I thought it was going to. <laughs> At all, but Sorry. but very. Yes, yes, it started with the weed. I started it with the weeds. <laughs> but a good a good conversation. Thank you very much, everyone, for chiming in, and um, no immediate resolution because these have been ongoing issues for us. But good to know what the, what the status is. So thank you, and the um, the bridge tiles are lovely. I'm glad to hear that he has he, he has the finishing touch on the top because that was my only comment was that just looks unfinished. Is that something we have to do? But it's good to know that he recognizes and has a plan for that. But yeah, it's stunning, really stunning. Okay, any comments, Alan or Jim? Okay. Moving on, uh, Jim, the status of the fun project. Um, yeah, can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, we had um, a meeting with Rich Block and John Block and Hannah uh, maybe a week and a half, two weeks ago. And it was really just kind of uh, to go over the zoning issues that might affect the project. Uh, and, and again, we're looking probably at a commercial project at this point. Um, so uh, it's still going to you know, require a development plan at some point, uh, but uh, it's not it's probably not going to have a residential component at this point. Questions for Jim about that? It probably won't have a residential component, the LaFon project. They're not anticipating that there'll be any residential on the property. Yes. So and Jim, is there any progress you can report on Paragon's working with the potential client? Um, yeah. No, it, it hasn't gotten a lot further that I know. Um, you know, some of this is confidentiality issues that uh, they can't really even share with me uh, mm -hmm. because of their negotiation. So all right. I know know is there it's ongoing and they're okay. still trying to come to terms okay. with a you know a, a major grocer uh, and so that's all I can tell you that's good thanks Jim thank you um communication plan you know I don't see Carol signed on here and I don't know if she didn't get the connection or what but I tried to reach out to her this morning and didn't get any kind of response back. So um, mm -hmm. missing an action, I guess, as far as beyond the uh, uh, the bulletin. Um, and I'd be curious if anybody heard anything back on the results of that uh, insert. I mean, I saw it, it's good. I thought it was nicely I, done. 
I didn't. I never saw it. I, really, I didn't get it's the, in the paper. It was in the I'm bulletin. I'm supposed to get the paper. I didn't get the paper. See, I subscribe. Well, so do I, but it didn't you come. Really, mine did, and it's in there, and it's very nice. It's two yeah, page. Mine did too. Mine didn't yeah. come till Saturday. Yeah, I, I think, think they come on Saturday, right? But yeah. Huh. So was this the issue that everyone was supposed to get? I, I think it was just their regular distribution. I mean, they, they do put them out in bins places, right? Yeah. Like at your restaurant. Yeah, and, but, and I got mine, but. But this was supposed to be in an issue that went to everybody. And yeah, that, I'm not everybody aware Everybody would be non-subscribers. So even if my subscription lapsed, lapsed, I should have gotten. Yeah, and I was not aware. Was that our understanding that this was in an edition yes. that was going to everyone? If we weren't going to, well, I wasn't at the June meeting, so I can't speak for the, you know, final disposition. But my recollection was um, an edition that went to everyone, to the whole community, or we would really seriously undertake the direct mail because we wanted it to reach everyone. Mm. So is is that not the case? Was this not an issue that went to everyone? I haven't a clue. I think we'd have to maybe ask Lynn Harwell or somebody. I don't Do know. you know the answer to that question, Jim? No, and I think, I know we discussed that, that it would go to everyone, but I'm not sure Carol ever confirmed that the distribution was going to be to everybody in the city, but I, I believe when he, even when we looked at the budget, that was the idea. Yeah, you know, it 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 has been sort of a moving conversation though, because my understanding was that there was going to be one issue a month that would be published physically, and the rest would be digital. And then now they've decided to go all physical publication every week. And um, so maybe that sort of changed the terms of what would be a free paper that was sent to everyone and what isn't. I don't know. Was well, this a Carol issue or a newspaper issue or what? A uh, combo. A combo. Yeah, it's because both. we, I mean, we clearly rejected the idea of a um, mass mailing to everybody in 80829 because of the cost. Right. But I thought it was very clear that this piece had to be in a newspaper that went to everybody. Wow. You know, I'll, I'll follow up with Carol to, to mm -hmm. see exactly what the distribution was on that. And I'll send out an email to everybody to confirm it. Okay. That sounds good. Well, the issue then becomes how do we get the information out citywide? Because we haven't done that. We haven't been able to do that. And is I mean, there's obviously going to be an additional cost to that. And if this is Carol's responsibility, I think she should share that cost. Just for your information, I have yet, and I'm sure Jim can confirm this, I have yet to see any invoices from Carol for anything with okay. regard to that. So I have no idea what she's going to charge us. Have you, Jim? No, uh, I haven't seen anything on it yet. Mm -hmm. uh, but typically, she you know, sends us a bill once a month. So I would anticipate the end of next week sometime. Okay, thanks. Well, I'd suggest we hold paying her until we figure out what happened. Okay, let's do that. Mm -hmm. And Jim, if you'd start the conversation with her and find out what happened. And then perhaps re report back, because we don't want to wait until our next meeting, perhaps report to John and to me and Ann as the officers, um, and we'll sort of move this along, have a conversation with Carol if we need to, um, about what the next steps should be. Because mm -hmm. I agree, my, it was my understanding that it was going to everyone. So when I got mine, mm -hmm. I just assumed, well, it, it went to everyone like it was supposed to. But that's clearly not the case. Not the case. That's not good. Does anyone have any thoughts about the rest of the communication plan? Frankly, I'm not really in a position to talk about that today, especially with this news. 
I think maybe we need to wait and fig yeah, mm -hmm. figure this out and then figure out what we want to do in addition to this before we move anything else forward with Carol. If you'd like me, Lynn just responded. He said, we are weekly now. You need a subscription to get in the mail. May and June issues were mailed to 2,000 people in OCC. May and June. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm curious. I'd be curious to know how many, be curious to know how many people received the July issue then. Um, I mean, if it's 2000, then maybe there's not an issue, but we missed a few. And <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what we wanted, right? We wanted the 80829. 80829. Mm -hmm. uh, nothing yet. I'll let you go. Okay. Jim, we're going to let you take the next steps and then uh, we'll wait to see what, hear what we, uh, hear what Carol says. Um, we're on to your report, Jim. Okay. Uh, quick update. Um, well, we just talked about the annual report. I've been coordinating with Carol on that. Uh, Jim, we need you to speak up a little bit more. Okay. Uh, can you hear me better now? A little, little closer to the microphone? Yeah, that's better. Okay. Um, did attend the, uh, the DDA ha uh, team, had a pre-bid meeting last week, I believe, and uh, we talked about with just two potential bidders uh, that would be consultants for that. Um, so that was just, a, I don't think it was mandatory. So hopefully we get more interest than just two. Um, I have a couple of questions. It really wasn't um, really, it really didn't seem like it, it was uh, that difficult for them to respond to. So, um, Anyhow, hopefully we get some we good interest in that. Um, what else we got here? Um, oh, I did send out the facade and site improvement grant application uh, to all the property owners. And I got one interest call from that. And basically uh, it was the owner of the uh, Emerald Fields that was considering replacing the roof. And wanted to know if I thought that would be a, you know, within the criteria. And I told him, frankly, I didn't think so. Uh, that that wasn't the intent of the grants. The grants were really intended to stimulate more business and, and, and improve the appearance of the corridor and not just O&M type expenses. So I told him if he wanted to put an application, he could. But I wasn't really, you know, that encouraged by that type of project. Uh, and that's about all I've gotten. I've had a few calls uh, from people that have been looking at the Martin property uh, to see if there's anything the URA can do to help if they have to make some major changes to the building. And again, I've, you know, I sent one the uh, the grant application uh, and said, you know, twenty five thousand. Uh, that that's you know better than a poke in the eye. Um, and then I also explained that, you know, they also would be uh, eligible for TIF financing, possibly, but um, right now uh, the board could probably do uh, property tax increment, but sales tax, we would probably need to go to city council at this point to get them to buy in on it. Um, and so hopefully that will help somebody make a decision on trying to buy that property. Because uh, I, you know, there's been some interest, but nothing seems to be that serious. And that's about it, as far as that's concerned. Been a kind of a light month. Thank you. Um, 
we have no new business I have to a question. Yes. Um, Jim, my being absent last meeting when you all met with city council and everything, but um, I went out and searched for the minutes of that meeting so I could be better informed about what did go on. And I stumbled across on the city website that there are forms to apply for different things. And I think I noticed the facade form or some other request forms that originate with the URA. Are those up to date on the city site? No, that, that's, a, that's a great point. I will follow up on that and ask Alex to kind of take a look at that and, and change those forms to the current ones. Um, and speaking of which, uh, they did change the uh, membership of the URA board to uh, reflect the current members. Uh, so that's been taken care of. I know, I think Alan, you asked about that last month. I will Thank follow you. up though. You know, I wasn't at the meeting, the city council meeting either, um, the work session. Does anyone want to give an update about that? Jim, can you give that update or maybe John? <laughs> well, I mean, I can tell I take a stab at it. It basically, it was totally confusing. <laughs> but uh, I, the, the long and short of it is council directed uh, Becca, uh, the finance director, to meet with John Shada and kind of get the numbers straightened out because they're all over the place. Uh, Becca did her report and I thought it was excellent and determined what she thought the impact was as far as sales tax uh, revenue and property tax revenue and then the impact it would have uh, regarding the Holiday Inn agreement. Uh, and John Shada basically uh, disputed that and he came up with his own numbers and they were really hard to track. Uh, so council basically directed the two of them to get together and try to Come, come to some conclusion on what the numbers really are. And uh, I think Ann and I are, have been invited to attend that meeting. However, that meeting is probably not gonna occur until um, early August, maybe late August at this point, and maybe even later. Uh, Becca is just swamped right now, uh, working on an audit and some other things. Uh, so I don't anticipate anything happening anytime soon. I'll make a couple of additions to that. Um, I spoke and I basically said that the URA board agreed with the staff recommendation and that we would like to enter into a memorandum of understanding with the city to essentially give us direction. And then I maybe put my foot on it a little bit and went through the history of the URA from the adoption of the plan through the land use model um, and the current zoning code amendment saying, these are the directions basically that council has given us in the past and they are somewhat conflicting and a memorandum of understanding could resolve that so that we would be working in concert. And I didn't probably say it quite that politely. <laughs> At any rate, um, Jim mentioned the result. Uh, Nancy asked that we involved, be in, the URA be involved in the meeting that included uh, John Shada and city staff. And so that's the expectation that it would be a three-part a three-party discussion to go over the the, the figures, which um, they're all over the place, as far as I can tell. Yeah. That's not my strong point. I think right. Anne has an update even yes. more recently than this. And Denise, if she wanted to talk with us, maybe she'll be covering this. But they, she had hit sure her office had been trying to set up this meeting for about three weeks. And um, it wasn't, we weren't getting any response from John Shada. And I got an email from Denise yesterday, although it was, it's a little hard to tell who it comes from, indicating that John Shada has decided not to pursue his 
approach, but John Graham wants to meet. So I don't know, and I emailed Denise early this morning as to what the next step is, but that looks like where we're going now with a discussion with Becca, perhaps me, and the mayor. Okay. And if I could add on, if memory serves me, the mayor that night said that he, he was um, under the impression that if the URA was disbanded, that the city could get more money. Uh, so it was still his intent to disband the URA. So, but the council deferred it because no one, no one, everyone was so confused by what uh, Mr. Shada had submitted. No one on council could decipher it, nor anybody else. So, you know, it, it I, I wasn't at this council work session, but my belief about the staff process is that the staff was directed to do a very specific thing. And if that very specific thing has changed on direction of city council, the next step may not be a meeting with us again and the mayor um, that would generate new staff work. It may be to come back to council and ask for further direction from council about what the next steps are. So I just, I, it is concerning to me that we keep running down these rabbit holes, doing more work that's taking Jim's eye off the ball and the city st staff's eye off the ball without a real understanding of where the council really wants to go with this issue. So, Nancy, <laughs> you are our very competent liaison <laughs> who continues to just get ground up in this conversation. I apologize for that, but it, it, uh, you should, and be exploring with Denise what happens next, but I wanna be very cautious about what we step into next that doesn't involve the entire city council telling us what it is that they want us to be doing more of or less of, right? I don't want to just take direction from the mayor at yes. this point. And I think at this point, the intent at least is to sit down with the analysis that Becca has done and see if she can't get the mayor to understand the number. Okay. So it's really a clarification I discussion so. from, I think so. from your understanding. Right. Okay. Right. And I think that's appropriate. I don't think it, it is. Just, it would be useful to go back to council until we get that clarified. Because I think John Shada's approach did sort of confuse things. Yeah. Sorry to say. Okay. So the real issue was we got diverted, the conversation got diverted in a whole different direction. Now we're bringing it back, having the conversation we expected to be having. Okay. Yes, Barb. Well, I think it just appears to me reading the minutes of the meeting and other discussions that we've had, I think, and Nancy, you can speak to this, but it, it appears to me it all rests with trying to convince the mayor otherwise of dissolution. And whether that this prospective meeting is an attempt to do that, I don't know where council goes from here if your leadership is pushing in that direction, unless you're all going to align in different positions on that yeah. in some way as a majority. Yeah. I mean, to me, you can look at numbers all day long. And if somebody's got an opinion about something that's swaying a group, it doesn't matter. And that could be, but I think it will be very helpful to, to have one set of numbers that people don't dispute as being accurate. Yes. And we weren't there at that Last time. But we appear to be closer if John is withdrawing his version of yeah. the financial picture, correct? Yeah. And the other um, key thing I think here, unanswered question from the last council from that meeting is the issue of the school where the, if the school was fully reimbursed by the state for their tax or not, uh, I, I think that that still was an outstanding issue that night. Yeah, I actually don't think that's city council's issue, but I, we did hear from Mark Snyder that night that the state has made up 
about half of the deficit and we'll have it zeroed out by next year. But I don't know that that's city council's issue, frankly. It, it may not be, but it it is of concern. So I think just having that resolved because we were still getting those um, legal opinions from Jeff, like very late in the day that Tuesday. So, uh, you know, it was going for those four days. It was just constant updates, updates from Friday when the packet was posted until Tuesday night. We there was just tons of emails and updates and questions. So, so it seems like a lot of things may need to be. Yeah, more things may need to be clarified. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, at least there's some forward progress now and and you'll keep us posted about what you hear next okay terrific jim and alan do you have anything else to say about the city council discussion and where we're at now um i don't have anything on that uh i just got a text from carol i think she's maybe trying to log in uh so i don't know if judy can do that or how we actually do go ahead get her on. We're, yeah, we don't have Judy here. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm I'm ready. I'm ready to move on, frankly. I don't know that I want to have this conversation now that we've sort of unpacked that issue with her now. So Jim, if you want to text her back and say we're going to talk to her offline and invite her back to a later meeting, I think that would be better. Okay, I will do that right now. Thank you. Moving on to Nancy. Sure, well, I have a whole bunch of odds and ends of things to say. The biggest is probably something that uh, Barbara may want to comment on, and that is the library received um, $1.5 million from the Pikes Peak Library District, which, um, which is a loan. It will. It's an interest free loan. It will need to be re, uh, reimbursed. Um, but that basically, with the money that we already have and the grants we already have, is will allow us to start um, building the library, which is very, 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 very exciting. So, get it through the uh, regional building construction drawings through regional building, and then get the RFP out there, and then we can break ground. So, I don't know, Barbara, Marcy, do you want to? say anything? Sure. Uh, we were pleased to get that word just this week. Uh, there is a little bit of a catch to their um, loan grant effort. It'll be characterized as advanced lease payments on the space. So, and that's fine. That's a, a, a creative way to, to look at that. But the one little catch we've got to resolve is they want any kind of um, infrastructure, connectivity infrastructure to come out of that money. So we need to get back with them. Uh, they're being given the, the appropriate drawings and things to come back to us to say what their requirements are in terms of that kind of telemetry kind of aspects to their system and see what the price tag on that is. And my only point about that is that could add some additional cost or diminish their loan per se, depending on what that number looks like. But we're working ahead as our capital campaign committee, Marcy's on there as, as well. And we've had some wonderful grants to date El Pamar, we have a block grant, um, some other uh, uh, gifts are pending. Um, the historical so uh, society in Denver, there's a grant pending there. So long story short, other than the little complication I described, we think we're about, if, if our target is about the $4 million number, our gap right now is probably about 500,000. So that speaks to Nancy's comment that we can be shovel ready um, this fall in particular, but just that one little point
point of clarification, but we have to see what kind of number that looks like. And Denise will be negotiating with them over the next couple of weeks yep. um, to work out both the lease and yep. the, um, the terms of the, the loan. So yep. we're feeling very favorable, aren't we, Marcy? Uh, I think, well, yes, we, we came away from the first meeting feeling very discouraged by the comments made by the board and um, between that meeting and the meeting that occurred uh, this month, uh, they had apparently made some different decisions. And I think that's a plus. Although we, we saw some people on that board in June who were very, very favorable toward the, the uh, project. But they, they too were in a position where they didn't have all the information until that very day. Right. And so that, that made it hard on them. I, I would just like to add a comment about this whole issue on the, the from my perspective, uh, on the electronic issues. Uh, and I, I think the comment was made by Denise that um, the regional library put a heck of a lot of money over across the street to make that a, a workable library. They, and I and I have no idea what the number is or was, so they may be trying to. That, that's going to that's going to be the issue. They have put a lot of money into that building to make it workable for them. So I have no idea what that that final number was because nobody ever mentioned it uh, to anybody. Uh, so that that is going to be uh, the, the kicker, you might say, in this arrangement we've got to get to that number and we, see how we can make that yeah. work but we you know and not to belabor it but we continue with our efforts regarding yes. fundraising in a number of sources yes. so yeah. you know we're very hopeful that we'll achieve our our intended success so well we we hope that people who have given or people who have not given uh we were talking just last night about touching people who have not given anything and, and encouraging them to continue to give because we, we will have expense. Th this is one example of an expense that I think came out of nowhere to us. Yeah. Anyway, moving on. Um, Could I have one oh, sorry. more yeah. comment? Um, relative to the library, um, I don't know if everybody knows, but um, the city was gifted um, some money from, and I can't remember if it's John James or, or, or Tim James, um, which John's his brother. The, the initial uh, bequest was already uh, incorporated into the library budget and then the sale of the land is undecided where that funding will go at this point. Okay, but so, yeah. well, yeah, Tim James in his, in his will bequeathed his portion of the family estate in the Black Forest to the city of Manitou Springs. And that property closed in May. Um, I helped facilitate the, the arrangements that maximize the profit to the city um, because the Jane's family was, was entertaining a um, proposal from a Denver realtor, which, um, I should back up. Denise got me involved in this one because I'm a planner, and number two um, because I would of the benefit to the city potentially. <laughs> so she facilitated a meeting between John James, myself, and her, and her to talk about <clears throat> this proposal from the Denver real estate firm. And I advised the James family that if they wanted to maximize the profit that they would get from this land, which would also benefit the city, that they ought to go in a totally different direction than, than this proposal, which they did. And they had a beef with a, na a neighbor uh, property developer. And I said, you have to get over the beef because you need the infrastructure from that property in order to maximize the profit on your property. If you just want to sell it as raw land, you can do that and you won't make as much money. But and I directed them where to go, which buyer to go to, which planning firm to use. And they used all those things. And 
the bottom line is the city got $800,000 from that. And Mr. Tim Jaynes was an advocate of the library. And to me, it's appropriate that any additional funding that's needed come out of that $800,000. I know that's a city council decision, but the more it's the more public it becomes that this was the probable intent, although not specifically in his will of Tim Jaynes, that um, this ought to be the disposition of that money. And maybe not all of it's needed. I don't know. It's to, it depends on when we get to the the bottom line in terms of what it costs to renovate the library. <clears throat> so moving on, um, OSAC has purchased a strip of land um, by the creek and the um, ball field. So if you're wondering what happened with that, that's what happened. Um, part, this, of part. Yeah. part of the Martin property, yeah. is that why there's a fence up now? Well, there's been a fence. They're going to take the fence down once okay. it's purchased. Okay. That, I'm sorry. Yes, that's what I mean. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. There will be a change there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the Day of Friendship is coming up, as has been alluded to, next Saturday. Obviously, URA has a portion of that with the dedication of the art. So that'll be an all day or most of the day thing, potluck, heritage baseball game, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I can't remember the date, but in a couple of weeks or next week, I think there's a um, uh, education opportunity for everyone who's interested in the upcoming elections to run and it'll be an opportunity to get your packet if you want to go out and have petition signed. So again, I'm encouraging everybody to attend. I know that's how one of the reasons Debbie ended up as your chair of uh, your or on the ORA is she attended one of these about four years ago. So I'm hoping that there's a very good turnout and that we have lots and lots of people there. Um, it's on July 27th. Oh, and, thank I, you. and it's late in the afternoon, isn't it? Maybe not. It should be like six o'clock, I'm hoping. Yeah, something like yeah, that. Yeah, typically. So. There's the 27th is next. Yes. Um, it's here. Thursday? Yeah, next, next Thursday. Thursday night. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so come because you learn a lot. I mean, truly, you learn about all the boards and commissions right, and city right. council. You get to meet a lot of cool people. It was really, it was really fun to, to attend. Hopefully it'll be good. It'll be, <laughs> hopefully there'll be a lot of people there who are interested in running for city council. That's what I'm pushing for. Um, we passed the budget amendment last uh, Tuesday night and it was a very, very significant budget amendment um, because we had all of your money to distribute. So that had to go into the budget amendment this summer. Um, and you've already been informed that was last February when we made that, those determinations as to where the excess money would go. We still thankfully have a uh, almost a $6 million or over $6 million um, reserve, which is amazing. Um, and a lot of that was from the Jane's property uh, or the Volmer property uh, owned by James, Jane's. Um, I'm sure you've all seen by now that we were named the first metropolitan pollinator district in the United States certified or in the world <laughs> by the butterfly pavilion. So that was your, <laughs> they had a very nice festival a couple of weeks ago. So that was good. We also purchased a whole lot of new vehicles with the money and that's part of the budget amendment. Um, so you'll see uh, a lot of new um, pickup trucks and trucks that pick up stuff off the streets and a vac vacuum truck for the sewer department, which will recycle water instead of putting it all away. So anyway, that's exciting. Very, very, very expensive, but a lot of new vehicles. So hopefully we were playing catch up in a lot of, and that's one of the many places we're playing catch up. Um, Hiawatha Gardens Council approved us to go forward with the design that we've been working on. So that's exciting. Um, Hiawatha Gardens got way behind when the when we purchased the Chase Bank property because we we're going to incorporate that. But since that sale is still unresolved, um, we're just moving forward with the building and the plaza and the parking lot. Um, PPRTA, very exciting. We got 
$600,000 from PPRTA above and beyond what we're anticipating for capital improvements, specifically to go toward Hiawatha Gardens, since that was a um, A-list project, the only A-list project I believe that we still have for this go around. So uh, that, was, that was very good news. And the reason we got that 600K is because we had, we were the first, um, we actually asked since 2004, 2005, whenever we first joined the PPRTA, we asked how much we have put in over those years and how much we'd gotten out. And we found that there was a significant deficit. So uh, council was concerned about that and PPRTA uh, made that good. So, and actually we're now about 300K ahead of where we would have been um, over those 19 years. Um, we also voted to support Fountain in joining the PPRTA. So that was a huge uh, decision as well. Um, we purchased some land up on Pawnee uh, because <laughs> a small plot of land where we just, as the new owners were trying to build a house, a small house there, we discovered that there was um, water lines going directly under the house, significant water lines that would affect our water system. So um, it's gonna take us at least a year to figure out how to fix that so that people can actually build on that property if they so choose, or we could keep the lane in the future. But in the meantime, these poor people couldn't build so we decided we purchase the property and let and release them from their obligation so that we can fix it and they can move on with their life. And we purchased the uh, bench for $2 or a dollar. The bench that's in front of Green Horse Gallery, the Steve Wood concrete couch bench. So that is now belongs to the city. So we just have maintenance fees in the future and we purchased Oh, the light bulb, the big, huge light bulb piece of art. So those two pieces now belong to the city. So that's a lot. And then a ton of administrative stuff. So that's a significant laundry list of stuff that we've been keeping busy on, but mostly all good news. So any questions as I bore you all to tears? <laughs> if, if it's, if I understand it, you, how much money came from, from the Black Forest property? About between eight and nine hundred k. Nine hundred. I think it's closer to nine hundred. If memory serves okay. me. Okay. Someone said five hundred, and I thought that was wrong. Okay, nine hundred. And then the other property from Perda, you got six hundred thousand. From where? I'm sorry. Perda. Well, oh, PPRTA. Yeah. Um, no, that was just because we had um, put more money. Manitou has put significantly more money into the PPRTA than we've gotten out. Right. So now they gave us 600K to make that up. And the timing was very fortuitous actually, because it was a couple of weeks before we were voting on the fountain because we'll lose 1800 or 18,000 per year on maintenance dollars by fountain joining. So we got- well, I, I, understood, I understood that. I was just curious about the other property that I got the right number. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was not a property purchase. It was just for capital improvements. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. Alan or Jim, do you have any questions or comments from Nancy's report? Okay. Thank you very much. Um, other business, any items of other business? Jim has one. Farley, do you have anything or not? I, I just got a text from Lynn, and I do think before Jim talks to Carol, he should maybe call Lynn. I don't know. Um, but apparently the July issue is being mailed today, and they expect it to be in people's mailboxes on Monday. So maybe subscribers got it earlier, he and said, then everyone else gets it in the mail this week. Right. I think there's some, yeah, I think we just need some clarity from from Lynn. Lynn first. Okay. Did you get that, Jim? So that you can hold. Carol. Yeah. Uh, also, I've been texting with Carol and she pretty much confirmed the same thing. Uh, the distribution is supposed to be like 4,000. Okay. Well, that's, that's heartening, isn't it? So no wonder we've heard crickets because most people don't even have it yet, except those, those of us who subscribed 
in their fundraising drive, I think we got it right away because that's what I did, right? So we got the like advance edition. Well, it's also on the online on their uh, yeah. electric, electronic version that you can just log on their website and see it. Yes, but I would bet that most people in Manitou don't necessarily do that. Maybe they pick it up at Adams, right? They pick up the free physical copy, right? A lot of people do that. Okay, thank, thank you, Farley. That was really helpful. Um, Jim, your item of other business. Yeah, so I need to let the board know that effective probably the end of August, I will be moving uh, to San Antonio. Uh, uh, that's where my daughter lives and my grandkids. And so my wife and I have decided we are going to relocate. Uh, now, of course, that obviously affects my job here. Um, and I've had conversations with Debbie a little bit about this before, because uh, we've known about it for a little bit of time now. We've been working on trying to get the house ready to be sold, which anybody that's gone through that knows that's hell on wheels. Uh, but anyhow, um, I, I'm perfectly willing to work remotely uh, if the board chooses for that to happen. Or, or I'm also willing to, to stay on until you decide if you want to find a replacement uh, director and uh, I can do what I can. Uh, but you know, frankly, most everything I've been doing is, is kind of remote anyway, uh, example today. Uh, so uh, anyway, I uh, just want to let everybody know uh, it's, been, it's been a great ride and uh, uh, I'll respect whatever decision you guys make as far as you know, wanting me to keep working or not. But I have definitely enjoyed our relationship and I've really had an education working in Manitou Springs. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Any comments from the board members right now? This is sort of, this is very new news. So, so um, likely a topic for our August board meeting, but if anyone has anything they want to say right now. Well, Jim, I appreciate all the work that you've done and I hope that you continue to work with us. So uh, that's basically my position. Um, and you can, you don't have to answer this now, but for our August discussion, my question will be, um, what do we lose from the fact that you won't be local if we continue um, to have you essentially be the executive director? Um, and you obviously couldn't have met with Hannah with the blocks, so that's one of the example of, um, I mean, it just, you just couldn't do that remotely, I don't think, uh, at least not effectively. So if you could think about that and maybe answer the question at the August meeting, I'd appreciate it. Will do. Other comments? I'm just very excited for you, Jim. I'm glad, you know, we, we will miss your presence here. I do hope that we can work it out so that you can stay with us because you've got history and you've got relationships with property owners and developers that are important to us. Um, but it's not my decision to make alone. So we'll have to have a larger conversation about it. But I'm just really excited for you that you're, you're going to go be with your family because that's what we all want to be doing. So it's your turn. You get to. Anything else? All right, I'm gonna call us um, adjourned at 9.39. Thank you all so much. We'll see you in August. <laughs>